everyone, I'm Maggie Weldon from maggiescrochet.com and I wanted to introduce you to four Easter projects that I have for you. One is Lola the Bunny and this is made with Deborah Norvo worsted weight yarn which is called Everyday and the color possibilities are endless for this. And the second one is a large Easter basket that you see here. And this was made, I'm thinking, with Deborah Norville Everyday Yarn. And in the video, I actually show you how to make it with Everyday uh, Serenity Chunky. So you don't be afraid to mix and match your colors because the possibilities become endless then. And you can come up with a lot of uh, really great things. And that leads me into our eggs that you see here. I used um, several different Premier Yarns to make each egg. Um, this one was made with Deborah Norville Serenity, uh, no, Deborah Norville Everyday Yarn. <laughs> and these are knitted eggs, and that's a separate um, pattern that's going to be available where you see the crocheted eggs. And then for this one, I used um, Deborah Norville Serenity Baby Yarn. And then this one, I wanted to see what hipster would look like. So we made this one out of hipster. And you can make these, they have a drawstring at the top, you could fill them with candy and then, um, you know, put this together and then draw it on the top. You could leave them empty and leave a long string and hang them um, from a little tree that you paint white, perhaps. And the grass in this basket is the Premier Yarns uh, Mary yarn, so it creates a cute little grass effect. And last but not least are my little Easter baskets that I made. And I used to have a crocheter and she would make a whole bunch of these and fill them with jelly beans and give them out to the um, her friends at church and her friends here at Maggie's Crochet. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. So um, the yarns that you could use are endless. There's um, afternoon cotton for the eggs uh, would look good. You could even use a jewelry type yarn, which is spangle. That would be really pretty. Um, there's a lot of colors in Deborah Norville um, everyday yarn. You could use ever soft yarn. And then there's a lot of hipster colors. And then the cuddle fleece, you could use um, all the various colors for the little baskets because that's the yarn I use for the baskets. And that works out really good for the baskets because the um, sides come out really firm. So anyway, all of these are going to be in separate videos, and this is, uh, if you're watching one of these, be sure that you watch all of them. So I hope that you have a great Easter, and I hope these projects add a lot of fun to it. Here's a close-up of the little Easter basket. I started at the bottom with three rounds of single crochet, then I work in the back loop, I work up the side, and then I do a little loop border on the top, and then I chain 24 across and single crochet back for the hang handle. So this is a great, great beginner project. So you will need a size H or comparable crochet hook and I'm using the color Grape Jam in Cuddle Fleece yarn and this yarn here was the color Spring Day. And then you'll need a little piece of contrasting color yarn. So to get started, you want to make a slip knot. And to do so, I make a loop like this. And that top strand, I fold over the back like this. And then I take that back strand and I bring it forward out of the circle. You'll notice there's a knot side and a slip side. Just pull the knot side. and then put the big loop on your hook and then pull on the slip side until the loop is floating on your hook like that. Okay, now you want to chain two, one, two, and then work eight single crochets into the second chain from hook. So this is the first chain from hook, so this is the second, and I'm just going to Go ahead and work eight single crochets into that same chain. And I just went in the top strand and you see what's happening here. The hole is getting super big like that. All I have to do is pull on that slip knot and move my stitches around and pull like that. 
to close it up. Okay, so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Might have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I did one too many. Okay, so I have eight single crochets here, and this strand here is from the end of my starting chain. So I'm going to pull that and I can tighten up that hole there. And then when I sew my end in or else I can work over this end, um, that won't come loose. Okay, now, between round one and two, you don't join, you just continue on, but you need a marker so you know where the beginning and the end is. So I just lay my contrasting yarn on this side of the last stitch of round one, just like that, and then I let it get sandwiched between the last stitch of this round and the first stitch of the next round. So now I'm going to work two single crochets. I'm going underneath both strands of that single crochet and I'm going to work two singles in each single crochet around. Pull some yarn out. Okay. This hook is small compared to the recommended hook for a number five bulky white yarn, but I want the basket to be really firm, so I'm working with a smaller hook, so my stitches are really tight. So basically I'm doubling the number of single crochet stitches on round two. So I'll go from 8 to 16 stitches. These are great gifts um, to give people at Easter time. Or you could even do them for different holidays and fill them up with different treats. My uh, crocheter Fran, she used to make tons of these um, baskets and bring them to church filled up with jelly beans. So cute. Okay, so I completed round two and I'll count. If I go back, it's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. And that's the number I want to have. So um, this marker, all I have to do is move it. Now it's coming out of the front here and I just move it back and I sandwich it between the last stitch of round two and the first stitch of round three. So the first stitch is going to be an increase. So I put two singles in there and just one single in the next one. Two and then one. And then two. Uh, because of the smaller hook, it's a little bit difficult to keep the yarn on the hook. So you just repeat that. Um, you do an increase and then a single, and then an increase and single. And you're still going to be increasing by eight. Got an increase, single, you can use a um, bigger hook if you want to, okay, so single, one, two, I think the recommended hook for this yarn is actually like an L. Got an H here. Okay, so I ended my repeat with a one single crochet by itself. So I'll go around and count. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. I gotta make sure I did that right. 
So it's two and one. Let me take this out. I've got two and one, 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 two and one. And I skipped a stitch right there. I thought it didn't come out right. So right here, I'm going to do two. And then a one, and then a two, and then a one. Okay, now I should have the right number of stitches. So now I'm going to, let me get a little thing that I have here for counting. It'll be like a little pointer. So right here I have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. All right, so I have one too many, so I need to pull this one back and do away with this. And I should have stopped the round right there. And I just went a little bit too far and I had one extra increase. But you should have 24 at the end of round three. And now for round four, you're gonna be working just in the back loops. Up to this point, I've been working in both loops of the stitch. So my marker now is in the back and I'm just gonna bring it to the front and I want it on this side of the last stitch of round three. And now I'm going to continue on to round four and I'm just going to go in the back loop. So let me show you this. This is the front loop right here and this is the back loop. So I have been going underneath both loops. Now I'm going to just go in the back loop. And I'm not increasing anymore. I'm just going to crochet even all the way around. See, by um, only going in the back loop, now I'm creating that ridge that will define the bottom of the basket. See right there? So once you go all the way around, there's the, there's round four complete. Now I'm going to move my stitch marker and the next round I'm going to just work in both loops again. So this is round five. So you just continue around here working in both loops for rounds five, six, and seven. And I'll do the same and I'll come back on camera and show you round eight and nine. Uh, round eight actually I decreased a little bit so that the ruffle round wouldn't just make the basket just go too far out. So I did a few decreases on round eight. So here's my basket worked up to round seven. So for round eight, it says single crochet in the next four single crochets. And then do a decrease. And to do a decrease, you insert your hook from front to back, drop a loop, and then do the same thing in the next single crochet. Drop a loop, yarn over, and draw through all three loops on your hook and then you single crochet in the next four. Okay, then work a decrease again. 
And you do that four times, so you're going to have four decreases. There's a decrease. And if you do it right, you should land up with a decrease at the very end. Okay, there. Okay, so now you're ready for the loop round. Let me see. Um, you're going to chain five and slip stitch in the next single crochet. So I would recommend too that um, you've, you're ending with a decrease right there. So you slip stitch right here to this um, next stitch. Then you chain five and then you slip stitch in the next stitch. All the way around you do the same thing. Then chain five and slip in the next and then chain five and then slip stitch in the next single crochet and just continue around like that. One, two, three, four, five and then slip stitch is just insert, drop a loop and draw it through the loop on your hook all the way around. Same thing. Alright, so I'm going to uh, finish this and then I'll come back on camera and show you how to make the handle. So I've completed round 9 and I have 20 chain 5 loops going around and I ended with a slip stitch in the first um, single crochet that I worked in and now I've chained 20 for the handle and I've done so very loosely and you'll see why in a minute. So what you want to do is look at the inside which is the wrong side of the basket and count 10 of these loops. So you have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So your handle needs to be joined on the opposite side between the 10th and 11th loop. So you see that stitch right there that they have in common and you're going to insert your hook from the wrong side to the right side of your basket and yarn over like that and then pull that through the loop that's on your hook like that and that joins the handle. So then I'm going to chain one and now I need to work back across the handle to give it some strength. So to do so I am going to try to work, I want to work in the back bar of the chains. You can work just in the the top strands across here, that would be fine. Or you can work in two of the strands like this and work a single crochet. But what I want to do is turn it and work in that back bar of the chain. It'll just give it a really nice finished look. That's why I chained really loose so that those bars would be easier to work into. So just like this, I'm turning the chain so that I have access to the back bar. But by doing that, you land up with a nice little chain finish on both sides. And it's a real sturdy handle. So that's how you do that. So you go all the way back in each chain, I'm working in the back bar of the chain. Okay, when you get back to the other side, you'll have your handle looking like this. Like it's really cute. Uh, we did this one a little bit differently and I wanted to change it for this model because this is a, a sturdier handle and it'll stay up 
better. Okay, so this is where I started that um, chain. So I'm just going to go back into that same space. This time I'm on the right outside of my basket. I'm just going to insert my hook in the same stitch from a right side to wrong side. Yarn over, draw that loop up, and then draw that through the loop on my hook. And then I'm just going to do one more chain. I'm going to pull the back side of that chain to tighten it. And then I'm going to cut back here. And then just pull that out and I'll lock it. And that's how you make that cute little basket. Isn't that darling? Oh, so cute. Need some pink little jelly beans. Okay, so that's how you make that. So that's the better basket with a um, better uh, handle. Now I want to show you how to weave in your ends. Okay, so you take a yarn needle like this. Hopefully this is going to be big enough. And you just take the side of your yarn needle, actually, I've got this needle right here. So the last thing I want to show you is how to weave in your ends. And to do so, you take a yarn needle and you turn it sideways so the side of the eye of the needle is facing you. And then you take your strand of yarn like this and you hold it over the side of the needle and you pinch it really, really hard like that. And then you turn the eye of the needle so it's facing you now. And you open your pinch fingers like this. And you push the eye of the needle over the folded part of the yarn. And then you just pull this through like this. And then you go in here like this. And you want to go into the thickest part of the stitches, which they're all kind of thick here and just weave the yarn back in to your piece. I actually like working with a yarn needle that has a very sharp point on it because it'll just cut right through all these stitches. But they're hard to find. Okay, so you just go like this and then always cut flat. Never cut down into your work. So that's it. That's how you make that cute little basket. So um, the links to everything are listed below and I want to thank you very much for watching and make sure that you subscribe to our channel.